Hey everybody, welcome to today's lesson on the gross anatomy and routine radiographic projections of the shoulder girdle. This essential topic forms the foundation for accurate imaging and diagnosis of conditions related to the shoulder girdle. In this lesson, we'll cover appropriate medical terminology, the anatomy of the shoulder girdle, and routine projections for radiographs of the scapula, clavicle, AC joints, and shoulder. Let's dive in. There are some key terms we need to know for this lesson. Let's start with the bones. Shoulder girdle connects the upper limb to the trunk. Clavicle, the long bone that forms the anterior part of the shoulder girdle. Scapula, the flat bone that forms the posterior part of the shoulder girdle. And humerus, the long bone of the upper arm. Now let's look at the joints associated with this lesson. Scapulohumeral or glenohumeral articulation the synovial ball and socket joint between the glenoid cavity of the scapula and head of the humerus. Acromioclavicular articulation, the synovial gliding joint between the acromion of the scapula and acromial extremity of the clavicle. And the sternoclavicular articulation, the synovial double gliding joint between the sternal extremity of the clavicle, the manubrium, and the first rib cartilage. Now let's apply these terms and use them to identify the corresponding anatomy. Two bones make up what is known as the shoulder girdle, the clavicle anteriorly and the scapula posteriorly. The girdle is completed in front by the sternum, but is incomplete in the back. The proximal humerus articulates with the scapula to form the shoulder joint. The humerus will be discussed in detail in a future lesson. The clavicle, which is classified as a long bone with two articular extremities, acts as a fulcrum for the movements of the arm. It is commonly referred to as the collarbone and lies in a horizontal oblique plane just above the first rib and has a double curve for strength. Clavicles in males typically have a more prominent curve. The lateral or end furthest from the center of the body is termed the acromial extremity and articulates with the acromion of the scapula. The medial or end closest to the center of the body is termed the sternal extremity and articulates with the manubrium of the sternum and first costal cartilage. The scapula, commonly referred to as the shoulder blade, is a flat, triangular bone with three borders, medial or vertebral, superior, and lateral or axillary. Three angles, superior, lateral, and inferior, and two surfaces, costal and dorsal. The acromion process extends laterally over the head of the humerus. The coracoid process projects anteriorly beneath the clavicle, and the spine runs along the dorsal, or posterior surface from the vertebral border to the acromion. When in a lateral projection, the scapula looks like the letter Y, with the acromion and coracoid processes forming the upper parts of the Y and the body of the scapula forming the lower part of the Y. The scapulae lie on the supero-posterior thorax between the second and seventh ribs. The flat aspect of the scapula lies at approximately a 45 to 60 degree angle in relation to the anatomic position which is important to know when performing a lateral scapula and scapular Y view of the shoulder. There are three joint articulations in the shoulder girdle, scapulohumeral or glenohumeral, which is the shoulder joint, acromioclavicular or AC, and sternoclavicular or SC. All are freely movable synovial joints. The scapulohumeral is a ball and socket joint, the acromioclavicular is a gliding joint, and the sternoclavicular is a double gliding joint. The SC joints are discussed in more detail in a separate lesson. Routine radiographic projections of the clavicle include AP and AP axial. Recall from previous lessons that AP stands for anteroposterior, meaning the beam enters the anterior portion of the patient and exits the posterior portion. Since the second view is an axial, it means either the patient, the central ray, or both are angled. Routine radiographic projections of the scapula include the AP and lateral. The lateral projection of the scapula is achieved with the patient in an anterior oblique position, with the patient rotated 45 to 60 degrees, depending on the area of interest. Posterior obliques can be performed, however, they are less common. This is primarily because anterior obliques protect the thyroid, breast tissue, and other radiosensitive tissues from the direct beam. Routine radiographic projections of the AC joints include AP with and without weights. These radiographs are performed bilaterally, so both AC joints are visible on one image. In rare cases, a unilateral AC joint may be performed. 
Routine radiographic projections of the shoulder include AP external rotation and AP internal rotation. Other common projections include the AP neutral rotation and PA oblique scapular Y. For the AP external rotation, the patient's palm is supinated and facing forward in anatomic position. This places the head of the humerus in a true AP. For AP internal rotation, the arm is rotated medially, so the back of the hand is against the thigh, which places the head of the humerus in a true lateral position. AP neutral rotation is appropriate for a trauma patient, but may also be included in some routine shoulder protocols. For this projection, the patient's palm is flat against the thigh in a neutral position. The PA oblique scapular Y shoulder projection is useful to evaluate suspected shoulder dislocations and is named for the appearance of the scapula, which is placed in a lateral position. Because of this, the positioning and resulting image are very similar to that of a lateral scapula, with the exception of the affected arm, which is left down by the side superimposed with the scapula. So, in summary, the shoulder girdle is made up of the clavicle anteriorly and scapula posteriorly. These bones articulate with the humerus, sternum, and each other at the scapulohumeral, sternoclavicular, and acromioclavicular joints. The AC joints are often radiographed separately from the rest of the shoulder girdle to check for separation. Routine radiographic projections include AP and AP axial clavicle, AP and lateral scapula, and AP with and without weights of the AC joint. In the next lesson, we will take a closer look at the radiographs to identify this anatomy.